Welcome everyone to another episode of Coaching in a Session. My name is Michael Reardon and I'll be your life coach this evening. So today, what I want to talk about is going to be talking about like the news. And for some reason, whenever I talk about the news, it's always focus on the negative, right? We look for some of the positive, but when it comes to the news, we find a lot of negative and we need to be able to get the news in a way where we are informed, but we're not misinformed. And also where we can still go about our daily lives and not live in fear. And that's what happens typically with people when they watch the news. They will turn on ABC, Fox, NBC News, whatever the news channel they watch, that's what they're going to listen to. But then something happens. They're worried about something. Something is happening. Someone's the enemy. We're fighting someone. Someone's evil or terrorist. It's always something. It's always an agenda. And as long as they're going to push agenda, people are going to continue to watch. Because if the news didn't have this content that was fear-based, how many people would still be watching it? Not many. Maybe someone will check to see the weather, but you can do that on your phone. And then we have Twitter. What's trending? And some people are going to just give their opinions. Nothing wrong with Twitter and your opinion. I love to give my opinion on Twitter. That's where I'm actually most political. And it's just me having fun, right? Because at the end of the day, I understand what it is to have a strong mindset and to talk to someone who has a very frail and fragile mindset. They're easily manipulated. Just like the news manipulates them, I can easily control their emotions. Because if you know anything about coaching, you're in charge of your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions. But your thoughts can only be controlled by you if you're putting focus on it. And if you don't put a focus on it, someone else is going to control them, right? The news comes in. They say, hey, coronavirus is a new variant. Guess what? Fear automatically. Oh my God, this is happening. Uh, vaccine pass cards and mandates. You're going to lose your job. Oh man, how am I going to pay the bills? And I was supposed to retire in two years. Now, what am I going to do? Okay. First off, why are you not in a position where you don't need your job? Think about that. And it's not about winning the lotto. It's not about having parents who gave you all this money. It's about you. But they had a formulated plan and they're brilliant. They're evil geniuses when it comes to the people who created the vaccine, people who created COVID is very interesting because let's go back to 2020 and then we're going to get into the news. So in 2000, actually, sorry, let's go back to 2019 because that's important too. So in 2019, Trump was still president and the vaccine, the, the vaccine was talked about, right? It, it wasn't necessarily going to be like, okay, we're going to have the vaccine out during Trump's presidency, they didn't want that, right? And they simply said it wasn't ready, right? They don't want to rush it. But guess what? As soon as Biden comes in, how many months did it take? Two months, maybe three? And that vaccine was rolling out. Because it's their agenda to look good. Oh, we saved everyone. We saved the world. Okay, but why are you forcing people to be saved? If someone doesn't want to be saved, 
there there's no saving them right if someone is doing the wrong thing they're going to keep on doing the wrong thing regardless if you show them saying hey that's the wrong thing this is the way to do it this is how you should be living people can't see past the fog in their mind the fog in their life and what I do as a coach is for the people who are ready to get out of that fog, I guide them. I guide them out of their ways, their habits that do not help them, that do not aid them in their in the betterment of the life they can be having. And it's difficult because people have become so complacent. People have become so entitled where everything's owed to them. Everything is their way because if it's not, it's a problem. And I live in a fact-based world, a real-based world where if something doesn't go my way, I'm not going to say, oh my goodness, my life is so terrible Oh, man, what am I going to do? Oh, I lost a contract because of COVID or I mean, I can I can blame the world for anything. I can. I can even blame my parents for, you know, being the skin color I am or having the culture or the religion, you know, or the religion I grew up in. I can easily blame someone for my life. But where's the ownership in that? Where's the ownership in saying that, all right, this is the deck of cards that I was dealt. Now I need to play my hand. And a lot of people are just saying, my hand's not good. I'm not going to play it. I'm just going to complain and I'm going to say, it wasn't my day today. I was dealt a bad hand. It wasn't meant to be. Those coddling words that people use ain't going to get you nowhere. So the more people sugarcoat things, you're going to be pretty sweet and then your teeth are going to rot. But let's get into the news. So here we have some news. Let me pull that up for y'all. We're going to be just doing our regular news channels. And let's start with NBC today. So NBC, this is their homepage. I, I just type in a few news networks and, to, you know, to see what's going on. Right. So we can see we don't necessarily have to click on the links. We can just see kind of what they're talking about. So here we have like the vaccine again. That's a very big topic with the vaccine and the boosters. And um, I think Dr. Fauci had came out a few weeks ago saying that people don't need the vaccines. And then it was a few weeks later, he was like, if you are immune compromised or something and you're over 65, then you can get the, the booster shot. Let me talk about that. If you're over 65, you can get the booster shot. And I don't know how I feel about that. I'll tell you a story. So when I was younger, I would work in a nursing home. Uh, got, uh, that was my first job, working in a nursing home. And before I was hired, I was a volunteer in the recreation department. And so I would deliver mail for people. I would... Uh, just go talk to people. Some people I would play like chess or checkers with. And whenever I passed out the mail, I always enjoyed one resident the most. And it wasn't because she chatted me up or anything. It was just that her aura. She was so friendly. She was so full of life. And even though her circumstance was living in a nursing home, she was happy every single day. Always talking on the phone, 
always smiling and just the life of the party. Well, first year goes by and everything's fine. And all of a sudden I stopped seeing her. And this is a person who's young. This is a person who's very young. She was, well, not very young, but in her 60s, maybe early 70s. And out of all the residents, she was the most lively. Walking, talking, just a joy. And fall comes and some of the residents get flu shots unless there is some type of written thing that they don't get the flu shot. But she got the flu shot. And the flu shot killed her. For for me to hear that news, and I was working at the time, I was done with my volunteering. I was like, she was just fine. She was literally walking and talking and doing everything she needed to do. Now she's no longer here because she took a shot. And it's not so much that the flu shot is bad and that it kills people. It's it's more so that she didn't need that shot. She was perfectly fine the way she was. And if you have been in a nursing home, you will see that the residents are typically separated. And if someone is sick, the person doesn't come out of the room, right? So they'll eat in their room. They will, won't go to any events until they're better. And even if you had to go in there to your nurse or if and if and if you had like just to go in there talk to the person family members or whatever you would do so cautiously and some people like some like the nurses would wear masks but i would go in there and just give them their food and come right out now maybe i was told the wrong thing but they said, if you're just going in to do it real quick, that's fine. And I never got sick. And I was always a healthy person. But for her to be in a nursing home and then to get a flu shot, she's not even going out. What is happening? So then now all of a sudden she is trying to figure out, okay. I'm in this situation. I'm going to get the flu shot because all the nurses are telling me to get the flu shot. And then if they get the flu shot, guess what? Cool. But then at some point, it's not cool, especially when your elderly are passing away who didn't even need the shot. I found that very interesting because we can easily say, I need this vaccine. I need this COVID vaccine. It's not a vaccine. It's a, it's a shot. It's a, it's a COVID shot because it was, if it was a vaccine, then you wouldn't have to be worried about all these variants because if they may, made it for the beta or the alpha variant, whatever, the initial variant of COVID, they are going to call it Shouldn't that have been the cause or the or the number one thing we should have been protected from? And yeah, maybe we were protected from it. And then we have the different variants that came out. And all of a sudden, it's not so much about what we want. It's about what they want. And if we look at 2019, Trump's president, the vaccine was coming out, the Democrats were pushing for lockdowns. Camilla Harris tweeted out. I'm not sure if Biden tweeted out. I didn't see any tweets from him about it. But I personally saw the one from Camilla saying we need to lock our country down. This is like in November of 2019. And I was like, what? Like lock our country down, close our country, like stop the economy. I was like, what are they trying to do? 
And the reason why they did that was because they wanted the economy to fall and for Trump to look bad because they were trying to kind of stack their deck when they were going against Trump because they knew they were going to lose if they just kind of let people favor Trump. So they just kind of played their cards to say, oh, look, the economy is bad. Oh, people are not working because everyone's locked down, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, there's no vaccine. People are afraid of, of COVID. And people voted on a fair base. So when we look at these news, right? So nice and big for all the people who've got the shot and they said, all right, come get your booster now. But then we have our next story, right? And this is kind of like a combo attack where they're attacking people who are anti-vax and people who are uh, with Trump, right? So like with the whole thing that happened on January 6th, a peaceful protest, we won't talk about BLM maybe another time, but simply that people can have a peaceful protest and nothing happens. But then the, all of a sudden, if someone else is having a protest that is violent, full of entitlement, problems happen. And did some entitlement happen on January 6th? Of course, right? Freedom, America. The capital should be open to Americans, right? What would I told you? Or what would you do if I told you that you're not allowed to go to the grocery store? It's your right to go to the grocery store, right? It's your right to leave the house and go to the grocery store. Uh, Quarantine or no quarantine. That was one of the the, the, uh, things they did in the quarantine, saying, oh, if you need to go out to the gym or work out, you can go work out. If you need to go out for provisions, you can go out and get provisions. But anything else, you better stay inside, right? Because they understand the the basics, right? They can't take that away from you. And so looking at the vaccine thing for the ICUs, so my grandmother, she was in the the hospital, I believe, was probably like a month ago, right? So she was in there for dehydration. And what's crazy is she was put in a, in a double room. And so she's in this double room and, you know, they don't ask her to get the vaccine or anything like that. They just ask her in the beginning before she's admitted, did you get the vaccine? Right. And, of course, and she said, no, she didn't. And so, Maybe a few hours later, I think it was about nine hours later, they bring in a COVID-19 positive woman to the room and the woman's coughing and all this stuff. And so they put a COVID-19 patient inside the room with someone who's perfectly fine. Okay, let's talk about that. Someone who is perfectly fine, no signs of COVID or being sick or the flu, was in the hospital for dehydration, has to share a room with someone who has COVID. Now, I guess we can talk about, all right, well, maybe the hospital was so filled that there was no other rooms and she had to go in that room. It's a possibility, right? But it becomes a little bit more than likely, because I know the hospital that she was at, and that hospital is a big hospital. There's rooms, and there was plenty of vacancy. What they did was they just put her in that room to bring up the numbers. Interesting, because the state that she was in is a blue state. Let's keep people afraid by getting more people sick. Interesting. So, my grandmother... She was an RN. She knows all about that, right? So she said, all right, this is not going to happen. So she boogies out. She leaves. So vaccine groups push people to leave ICUs. Hmm. Okay. 
you don't even need to be in the ICU. Now, if you're having trouble breathing, okay, that's fine. And then another source of mine works in the hospital. Everyone's fine. And then the people who are going in are obese. I thought being uh, big was beautiful, but it seems like being big is deadly. Being big is unhealthy. So DJ King, the vaccine was made by aliens. It's going to kick in soon and we'll all be controlled by aliens. <laughs> all right. So I don't believe it was created by aliens, but it would be interesting if it was because didn't the government just release their Area 51 or their uh, intel on aliens? And, the, and, and this is what the government does. And this is what people do, right, who are trying to control people. They tell you something so it softens the blow. They hint at something so it softens the blow. When Dr. Fauci was like, we're going to flatten the curve, flatten the curve. They said, we're going to do two weeks. Okay, two weeks. All right. All right. So, yeah, two weeks, then flatten the curve. All right, guys, we're going to do one month. In a month, we're going to get back to normal. Let's get back to normal. Well, guess what? One month has happened. We're not back to normal, right? It's getting worse. And then they're saying that, oh, people are not listening and going out and, and all that stuff. Okay, well, let's fast forward to, to, you know, 2021 when we have Obama's party, right? So Obama's having a big party. No one's not no one because people were wearing masks. The majority of people weren't wearing masks. Some people in there weren't vaccinated. But you don't hear anything about someone from that party catching COVID. It's a double standard. And it's going to, to continue to be a double standard as long as there's standards. So looking just here, so we have the booster rolling out, um, you know, the mood juice. Uh, yeah, so why are so many pregnant women choosing to go unvaccinated? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. It's a lot to it, all right? And we can talk about Camilla Harris. We're not because it's not worth it. Um, we can talk about the. I think probably somewhere is probably a border crisis. Probably not on this one. I don't see it. But let's go into Fox News. All right. So Fox News is more right than left when we're talking about news media. So it's going to be addressing more so of your, I guess, your Trump voters than your Biden voters. And that's just talking on a, on a very fine line, right? Because it, it might not be the case. So FBI launches probe after Afghanistan. Afghan evacuees accused of disturbing attack on FEMA U.S. service member, right? So this right here is to go against the agenda. So they're saying, oh, we got all the Americans out. Oh, we did all this. Oh, you know, blah, 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 right? Not a problem. And this is kind of just like to poke at what they're saying that's against it, right? We're not going to talk about that. That's... Nope. Okay, so this is a big one, right? The U.S. border. I live in Texas. And so I've been to the border uh, for work. And it is very real. Now, you may or may not want to believe it's real. That's fine. You don't have to believe it's real. You don't have to believe it's fake. But it's real. They're putting immigrants and hotels that they're buying out the federal government. So money that you are giving in tax dollars to the federal government, they are using to house immigrants and they have these designated hotels where the immigrants will go and they all have COVID-19. And people knew not to go to that hotel because that's where all the COVID-19 immigrants would be residing. Well, guess what happened? So many immigrants would come. There's not enough room in those hotels. So you know what they did? Catch and release. 
All right, we know you have COVID. Here's a face mask or we ran out of masks. Good luck. See you later. And now they're going out. Out into the wild, coughing, sneezing, nowhere to go. They don't even know what they're doing. I would say the majority, right? There's going to be some people who know what they're doing. But wide open borders. Now for me, put it in this aspect. Unlock your door. I don't care where you live. Unlock your door. Put a sign on it. It says, doors open. Okay? And leave it, right? You might go to sleep. Leave it. You might leave the house, just leave the sign. That's inviting trouble into your house. And you can live in the nicest of neighborhoods. That's not going to matter. Because someone who wants to do bad will do bad. Similar to George Floyd. All the protests, right? I'm all for peaceful protest. But for the people going out to say, oh, everyone's out, I can get away with something. And that's when they go out and they break windows and vandalize and loot. Because the circumstances allowed for it. If your door is open and burglars understand that, sure, not a problem. Next thing you know, they go to be starting to take guns away and they're going to say, leave your doors open. I don't know. But just looking at the news, right? Just it's constant bickering, especially on Fox, because Fox is going to be fighting, you know, all the other uh, news networks like uh, CNN, um, ABC, stuff like that. Right here, just more news about what the left, are, you know, is doing, the the Democrats are doing. Let's go to ABC. So here we go. Haitians migrants cleared from camp. So they're basically saying with with this that they're getting rid of the camp underneath the bridge, right? Because if we look at this, Simply talking about how it was so bad and 10, you know, 10,000 people are living under a bridge and how it's inhumane, all this stuff. Now they're clearing out the camp. But where are those people going? Right. Are they coming in? Do they have COVID? Who knows? Right. And to be honest, I'm not even nervous about COVID. I'll talk to someone who has COVID um, all day long. No mask. I don't need it because at the end of the day, I'm good. And that's the mindset thing, because a lot of people who wear masks and a lot of people who need the vaccine, they have a weak mindset. And you might say, oh, I'm doing this because of science. OK, that's fine. You can believe the science all you want. Then if you believe the science, why are you wearing a mask, especially the surgical mask? Because those surgical masks, uh, just the blue ones or if you have a different colored one, they are not meant to prevent you getting sick. Now, if you're sick, yes, it will help stop spreading the germs. But people believe that if they put the mask on or some fabric over their nose and their mouth, they are magically protected. Now, if you're wearing an N95 mask, good on you. You will be definitely more protected. Uh, N95 does have a history of being able to block the small particles, which is a virus which would be the COVID virus. So doing that and then making sure you dispose of the mask or sanitize it properly, up to you, right? But I live in Texas, so I'm going to do what I want. So CNN, let's see what they said. So even Biden caught off guard in recent foreign policy crisis. So CNN has been the lapdog of uh, Biden saying, oh, he can do no wrong and he's so great. And that's that's all well. But ever since the Afghan issue, they have to kind of throw him under the bus because he's messing up. 
right? He messed up and that's a big mess up, right? That mess up is, you know, enough to be impeached, right? He lost billions of dollars in, in, in your money, right? By giving, you know, by giving the embassy and um, literally a country back to the people they were fighting for, what, five years or something like that. And they say, oh, um, and we're going to leave all our weapons and our vehicles and, yeah, just enjoy. So kind of like, you know, slap in the face a little bit for him to do that and for that to happen. But when there's a lot of conversation happening behind closed doors, you know, things like that are bound to happen. And, you know, shame on the people who set this up. And Biden is not all, you know, to blame for this, you know, because I'm not going to say he's the reason that this happened and you, and you should dislike him. I, I believe that is false, right? When it comes to Biden, he is a puppet, right? Most most presidents will be bought out to an extent if they are not a puppet when they go in, but if they do go in and are elected, they typically will follow what the party is looking for, right? The higher power. So Biden is just kind of going where he's told, right? If you ever watch a, a press conference with him, he reads what he's supposed to read and they tell him, do not go off of script. And he has even said, I'm not allowed to talk or I'm not allowed to answer questions or I have to read a script or where should I go next? He needs to be told, right? So not on him. It's the people telling him, right? And so right now they're just kind of putting the world in on this hate on Biden and people are going to, you know, dislike him. S same thing they did with Trump, right? So if Trump does something wrong or um, people shame on his character, that's fine, right? But at the end of the day, they're going to they're going to follow an agenda. So he's just going to be an escape go at some point where they're going to say, you know what, we had our run with him, let's bring in Camilla or let's bring in Pelosi or they might bring in maybe Beto, um, who knows. But when it comes to what's next, that's always going to be up in the air. But looking at the history of human civilization, the probability that their plan topples over is very likely because a lot of people are waking up. It was due to necessity that they rushed things, but if you rush something, people kind of become more aware. When you go to a casino and let's say you don't really like gambling, you don't want to lose a lot of money. So you lose a little bit of money at a time. So you say, okay, I'm going to bet $5. I lost $5. All right. I only lost $5. Cool. Um, bet five more dollars. Okay. I won five. Cool. I'm even. And then you keep doing that and do it for about an hour or two. And by the end of it, you realize you're down $700 and you say, well, how did this happen? That was always the plan. People are waking up in the sense of, why am I needing to get a vaccine or why am I needing to show a pass card again in a restaurant, things like that. And I know some people who have got the vaccine and they're fine and all, but they won't show anyone. Like if they go to a restaurant saying, Oh yes, I'm vaccinated. Right. Cause it's not a HIPAA violation or anything. It's just simply, it's simply, that's what people are demanding. And it's a modern age segregation, right? If you look at segregation, how it was, blacks sat here, whites sat here. Blacks went to this restroom, whites went to this restroom. And before you know it, you're going to start to see that in restaurants. What that shows is our youth, our young minds, that segregation is fine. 
you can hate a certain group of people because they're different, because they have a different opinion, right? And that's just going to create more hate. It's very interesting. And then we have our school system where some schools, of course, especially here in states that are going to be considered blue and pro-vaccine, pro-mask, stuff like that. You know, those kids are now wearing masks while they're in school. But then if you look, I can even, I can probably even show you the picture if I, if, if I look for it of teachers not wearing the mask and all the kids wearing the mask. It's very interesting. Why? I'm not sure, but I am 100% excited or not excited. I'm 100% content with my choice to have left teaching when I left teaching. And I left teaching in 2016, but if, if, we, if I kept in it, I would have stayed in it because tenure would have hit and I just would have been more complacent in that field and, I, and it would be a lot more difficult to get out. But now we have our teachers who are opinionated and they can be impeded, you know, have their opinions and they can say what they're going to say. But the school system is meant to teach them a certain thing, right? The, there is going to be a criteria of what the kid needs to learn by the end of the year. And some schools have a full lesson plan or f- a full teacher script that needs to be read. So if you're in one of those schools, you definitely don't have the luxury to say your opinion. But if you are in a school where you do have some say and some opinion that may or may not come out in the classroom. And for me, when it was always class time, it was always class time. It was work time. And I remember one time it was, it was something, um, I think it was when Obama was getting reelected. I think, yeah. So something like that where, and people and the students were asking like, Oh, like who are you going to vote for? Blah, blah, blah. And it was simply me just saying, well, I don't talk to, you know, I don't talk about politics, especially, you know, especially the children. So, and then they're like, come on, come on, you know, just like that type of thing. But they, they need that drama. They want that drama and look at what's happening to teachers who are, you know, sharing their opinion, right. They're being recorded, especially since, you know, cell phones can be used in some schools because they're allowing, you know, children to use their cell phones in school to look up some homework, um, internet searches, things like that. Um, because having laptops for each room and for enough students is expensive. So if students are going to have a cell phone, guess what? School doesn't have to, you know, spend money on laptops. So I started to see that right before I was, you know, before I was leaving school. So here, just more, more stuff, protests around the world, um, blah, blah, blah. Right. And I'm sure I can find something good, but it's a lot more difficult to find something good. This might be good right here. The news. Let me go just back to me. The news knows what it's doing, right? It wants to be clickbaity, right? It wants to retain its viewers. It wants to get its ad money. It wants to do all these things that news you know, needs to survive, right? The bread and butter that keeps the lights on. But what does that do for you, right? This podcast is for your mental health, your your growth. And I'm not saying to not watch news or not get the vaccine. That's not my job, right? My belief is that you should feel safe in your own skin, right? You should feel confident in who you are and who you're becoming. Because if you're going to simply say that, oh, my vaccine doesn't work because someone else's vaccine is not in them, right? Or, or 
my vaccine doesn't work because the unvaccinated are not getting vaccinated. So I need the unvaccinated to get vaccinated. So my vaccine works. Does that make any sense? No. Oh, I have to wear a mask even though I'm vaccinated because I don't want to get anyone sick. But aren't you vaccinated? Because I already explained that the mask does not prevent you from getting COVID. It prevents the spread of COVID, right? But I don't know if I have COVID. I'm not sure if I have COVID, right? I may I may be asymptomatic. Hmm. Some BS, if you ask me, asymptomatic, right? So if you look at the COVID symptoms, it's every single symptom a, a human being can have. Got the runs, might be COVID. You're throwing up, might be COVID. Sneezing, coughing, definitely COVID. Be careful, right? <laughs> crazy. It's so crazy how how people are so easily fooled and influenced by by that type of logic. It was at a point where people are like, you are probably just asymptomatic because you probably have COVID, but you're just asymptomatic. And I was like, no, 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 I'm not asymptomatic. I'm healthy. You meant to say I'm healthy, right? And anyone who knows me, I'm five days a week, I'm at the gym. And speaking of that, probably going to be doing a workshop for fitness and health coming up because next month, October is going to be health month, health and fitness month. So we're going to be having several fitness coaches. We're going to have some health and wellness professionals coming onto the platform and kind of talking to everyone and going to be great knowledge. It's good. It's going to be some good conversation. So stay tuned for that. That's happening next month. But if you know anything about me, I'm pretty healthy. All right. And I'm not saying that cancer can, you know, knock on my door, you know, tomorrow morning and, you know, throw me through the hoops. But I'll be interested into having that experience. Not saying I wish it on me. Right. But there's a story of a, of an NFL player who whose daughter got some type of cancer and she was going through the procedures and money wasn't going to be an issue because he was making good money, but still that's scary, right? To go through that process, to go through the treatment. And I, I probably will never forget when the girl was about to go through the, you know, through, you know, through the treatments and everything. And, and, uh, the father just kind of whispered to her saying, Hey, you're going to finish the game, right? Because he's a football player. So he's, he's going to use what he knows. He's like, you're, he's like, he's like, you have to promise me that you're going to make it into the end zone. You're going to get the touchdown. You're, you know, you're, you know, you're going to win. And then he was like, promise me, promise me. And she says, I promise. So journey happens and things like that, where there was a, there was a, where where he talked about it, where, you know, she was just done with her chemo and she was tired and she couldn't even color, right? She was that weak. And, and then she was asking like, the dad or the mom to color for her. And then that was like, no, she, you know, she needs to color. She needs to do it. Right. And she was like, but I'm tired. And then he just kind of said it again. He's like, you remember, you promised me you're going to make it into the end zone. You know, you're going to win. And I can't imagine how difficult that was for him to, you know, see his daughter that sick, that weak, but to still have a mindset saying, hey, we're going to win. We're going to be victorious, but I need you not to give up. And that's powerful. I need you not to give up. And all these people who give up their freedoms, so all these people who give up their body, 
willy nilly. Oh, I need to take a shot. Sure, come jab me. Oh, I have to stay inside because I need to flatten a curve, or because if I go out, I'm gonna get this virus. Sure thing, boss. <laughs> right? Asinine. Because. If you're going to stay inside your whole entire life because someone told you to stay inside your whole entire life, is that really living? Because at that point, you're better off being in a jail cell. Now, you might have a nice jail cell, five bedroom, three baths, big screen TV. But that's what it is. Wearing a mask is just, you know, a mark saying, I, you know, I'm a hero. I, you know, I put my safety first and I, and I care about what, you know, um, what other people think about me. Okay. I'm not, I'm not here to say, Hey, you are a hero. Hoorah. Good job. And I remember, I, and I remember I was at the park one time, you know, it, it was a group of college students and they were just sitting there being entitled as college students are I was a college student and they were like stay six feet back from us and they all had their mask on and they were like we're you know we're heroes we have our mask on where's your mask we're we're, we're heroes kind of like a kid putting a cape on now they can fly right asinine and so they're all huddled together not six feet apart but double standard, right? What they say doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to do what they say. Now, okay, you're a hero if you wear a mask. You are a role model if you wear a mask, right? All this, you know, CRP, and don't forget the A, but it's crazy. It, it literally is crazy how people can say, all right, you need to do this. And people are like, all right, all right, you know, I need to do it. Well, doctor told me I need to do it. Oh, it's science. I need to do it. But regardless of it's science, Dr. Fauci initially said, you don't need to wear a mask because masks don't protect you. And then that he probably got talked to saying, hey, probably want to rethink what you said. He comes on air. And he's like, yeah, you need to wear a mask. Okay, cool. A few months. I think it was about, I think it was uh, exactly nine months when he came back on air talking about the mask again because people didn't want to wear the mask. He was like, yeah, you should wear one, two, three masks. It's common sense. Hmm. And this is a scientist, right? This is a person who everyone puts all their faith in, the person who's funded the COVID creation. Right. He knows best. Follow him. I don't mind. But at the same time, don't don't pull me in with those ideals. Don't pull me in with how I should be acting or how I should be living my life, because at the end of the day, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. I'm going to shine at the end of the day. And you might not like how I shine. That's fine. You might believe that I'm operating in a wrong dynamic and a wrong perspective. That's fine. We have opinions. I can talk to anyone in the world of any culture and I'm going to have a regular conversation. I can have a cordial conversation, whether you got the vaccine or you didn't get the vaccine, whether you like Biden or hate Biden or like Trump, hate Trump. Because it goes back to your mindset. And that's what I do. I help people with how they think. Because how you think doesn't necessarily mean, all right, this is what I'm going to believe in. And I'm going to fight for it. It's more to see the other side too. Because where I am is I'm in the middle and I can see your side, I can see the other side, and I can make a choice, right? 
I can lean to one side. I can lean to the other. I can make a choice. But at no time am I am I going to say, oh, if you believe that, then, you know, you, you're going to die. It's your belief, right? If you believe something is going to protect you, then you're going to, you know, you're going to believe it's going to protect you, right? And of course, we're not talking about science. We're not talking about logic. We're talking about mindset because people get that mixed up because anyone can show someone the data that is contradicting whatever they believe. Anyone could do that. You can tell me something right now and contradict something I said. And I could show you an article from peer reviewed column, uh, Washington Post, New York Times. I could show you an article from one of those publications saying that I'm right. So who's right? Right. It comes back to our opinion. And how you want to live your life at the end of the day. Because if you're going to simply be upset that you're living haphazardly asleep, if you're living in a complacent lifestyle, that's your choice. No one says to settle for less. If you're going to settle for less and be inside and get a shot, go for it. If you want to Go out and be free and go to the beach and fight for freedom and, you know, fight for, you know, people not to get the vaccine or uh, mandates. Fine, right? Your choice. For me, I'm always trying to get better in my sense, because if I could be a better person, then I can help the world be better. But it starts with me. It doesn't start with me worrying about someone else because the moment I start worrying about someone else, who's worrying about me? Who's holding me accountable? And I, and I know for certain that people in the world, not everyone in the world has a life coach. We have a, we have a, we have a a society of men and women who need therapy just to recover from all the damage the world has done to them. That be the school system and the news. They're in a fair based mindset. They don't know what tomorrow's going to hold, but I do. Do you want to find out? Stay tuned to the next episode of Coaching in Session. But in seriousness, though, you should live how you want to live. Right. Don't allow anyone to limit or to coddle you into a corner. Right. If you want to believe something, believe it. But then don't allow your beliefs to be the the pinnacle of what other people should be following. And it goes back to mindset. Right. For me, I want people to have a strong, healthy mindset. I want people to be more positive. I want people to be successful. I want people to push themselves to achieve more. But that's wrong though. Because if I'm going to simply want people to have their best life, that's me being greedy because I want them to have their best life. And someone is out there and they're like, I don't want to push. I want to be lazy. I want to be complacent. I don't want to be rich. I don't want to be famous. And to that, I say, all right. You don't have to. I'm telling you the possibility. And if you like the possibility, go for it. But if you like your current lifestyle, stay where you are. I'm not, I'm not here to judge your lifestyle. I'm not here to say you're 300 pounds overweight. And you need to lose some weight. I'll leave that up to your doctor. The world can lie to you all. All it wants to. From image. From. How your habits should be. How you should be formulating your life and your goals. 
the world can tell you exactly what you need to do. But my recommendation is to find someone who's not telling you what you're going after, but what you should be going after. And it takes a coach, it takes a therapist, it takes a mentor to unlock that door for many people, or it takes some type of trauma. And that trauma invokes change. And that change is your best life. Because at some point, you're going to wake up and you're going to be tired of how you're living. How long have you been in your job? If you're in your 30s or your 40s. How long have you been there? Five years, 10 years? That's a long time. And yes, you might get a promotion every year. You might get a little bonus money on Christmas. But is that enough to satiate the human drive for abundance? Maybe. But for most people, it's not. For most people, settling for less is a habit. So get out of the habit. Don't allow that option to be your only option. Look at the alternative. And if you're having a hard time seeing that alternative, reach out to me. Email me at coachingandsession at gmail.com. I would love to chit chat with you to kind of figure out where you are. To figure out if you have what it takes to get to the next level. Because I'm going to say this. Again, as much as I want people to get to the next level, some people are just not built for it. Now, can you become equipped for it? Yes, you can. But it takes work, hard work, years of work. And if you don't have that patience, and if you don't have that motivation to get there, it's going to be very difficult to get there. Again, people who come to me and want to work with me, it's not because they listen to me and they say, hey, I want better for myself. Something happened in their life. Now they're down and out and they say, I don't have a choice. I need to get a life coach. And then I'm left with the broken pieces, putting them back together. Why do you have to be broken for me to fix you? Because not everything that needs to be fixed is broken. When you take your car to the shop, it's driving just fine, maybe. But your mechanic says, hey, you should get your timing belt changed. Preemptive care. Preemptive measures. It needs to happen for the human body, too. It needs to happen for the human mind. So, all in all, episode had a lot of this and that. And it's going to be a lot of opinion and a lot of uh, beliefs. And that's fine. You can have as many beliefs and as many opinions as you want. But if it's not carrying you to who you want to become, I would start to second guess that. I would start to associate your thoughts and your actions with who you want to be rather than who you are right now. Because if you don't have the life that you want right now, either you're the problem or you just don't know how to get there. It's important to have a mentor. It's important to have a coach. Even me. It took me having a coach, a mentor to get to where I am. And now that I'm at this level and I'm at this position in my life, guess what's happening? I'm already about to seek a new mentor. Someone who's higher and ahead, far ahead of me. And I can say, okay, I want to catch up to them. I want to have what they have. And it's not so much on a materialistic level. It's more so on a mind level. Because in order to have what they have, they have to have a different mindset. That's why if you win the lotto, most of the, those lotto winner, you know, winners don't retain their money. And it's because they have a poor mindset, not a rich mindset. And when you watch news, negative mindset, if you watch 
social media. Hmm. It could be both, but typically body image, right? So it could be negative. You might see someone, you'd be like, oh, they're so pretty or they're so handsome. And I, w- I wish I had their life. So now you're a victim. Circumstance. And we could talk about this all night, but I'm not going to keep you. But be free. We're going to resume on Monday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time for our regular blog posting session. And in the meantime, if you have any questions, again, email me coaching and session at gmail.com. If you want to work with me in any regards to personal development, mindset, fitness coaching, etc., um, I do marriage counseling. I do the gambit, but we, but we do focus on the mindset and you can go to revenueconcepts.com and just fill out a contact form and I will reach out to you and we can get that going. So until Monday, everyone have a wonderful weekend and I will see you soon.